shot you had to sell my soul So if you don't know, now you know Man, we already motherfucking happy to have a legend in the building, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate you stopping by, man. Real spit. I see you brought the real, real shit with you. <laughs> yeah, this right here, man. This is a, it's a crown right here. You know, hey, man, if y'all only knew, we gonna get into this. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. We I'm gonna get on, into man. this shit. Is history right here? But first yeah. of all, man, we gonna motherfucking rock into the motherfucking show. What we doing, man? How y'all doing? What's up, world? It's your boy, Kill the Gun, aka Kill the G, Real Spit TV. And I'm sitting here with world renowned, world famous. If you don't know, now you know. It's Tony Crypto. How about it? How about hey, man, it? Man, introduce buddy. yourself and, and, and tell them where to find you. you know Tony what I'm Crypto, like, man. Real Spit, man. You know, uh, man, y'all can just catch me on the gram, man. Tony Crypto underscore seven. At Tony, I'm sorry, Tony underscore Crypto seven. T O N Y underscore C R Y P T O seven. If you don't know, now you know. Uh, real spit. You know, so we on real spit. My man told me real spit. I said, oh man, I gotta come spit some real spit. So I'm here, man. How about it? What's popping, dog? Man, shit, you already know, man. Glad to have you. In the oh building, man, man, you already know, man. First of all, let's uh, let's get into this, man. What 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 is this? That we got right here in this box, it, man. in you this box. I don't, I, I don't think they could see it, man. If we could tell it like them. this, let me tell it like this. Uh, now y'all, now y'all know some. You know, now y'all know some. You know, think this is, it. this is, you know, for one, let me just say right now we in the fifty years of hip hop. So this is hip hop. This is hip hop. I got hip hop in the box. I got one of the most iconic souvenirs of hip hop in this box, right? But um, right here, man, this is one of Jam Master J's. Rims, you know, right here. This is Jay's hat. It's official. It was made by DJ Hurricane from Hollis Queens, original Hollis crew. Shout out DJ Hurricane. You know what man. I'm saying? From the Afros and you know Beastie Boys, and and he designed hats real for Jam Master J. So after Jam Master J died, he took the hats and you know made collectors editions for them, and a, a certain select few iconic people in hip hop got a crown, you know, and um. It is official with the Jay's hat paper. And uh, I do have a car certificate of authenticity. Authenticity is think that's how you say that there. This is number 23. So he had a bunch of brands. He rock show. It's a number 23 brand of Jam Master J right here. Jordan. Yeah, so here we go. Exactly. That's what I told Hurricane. And this is the brand. This is the brand right here. This is exquisite. Yeah, it got, it got the silk on the inside. Jay's hat. You know what I'm saying? It has Jam Master J right here, collector's edition. Then right here, it got DJ Hurricane, because all the hats, the brims that went on Run DMC, designed by DJ Hurricane. And, uh, boom. This is my crown. Hurricane came down here to Florida from Atlanta and put it on. And it had a lot of significance because, you know, um, part of the, the rock, you know, movement that I started in Atlanta with 5150 and DJ Scream, you know, I was one of the first artists where, you know, to stay on stage with DMC and do classic run DMC songs with rock. So, you know, we did a memorable concert after they got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame to where we turned out the uh, hard rock in downtown Atlanta with all the rappers in there from the A-Town stuffed up in there to see DMC get down to King of Rock. And uh, that's why I got the King of Rock title. So it took a minute and I got my crown. Now I'm here. Now it's not even King of Rock no more. It's King of the Metaverse, King of the Metal Worlds. That's what I do, homie. Thank so, you, man. so how's everything been going with this music, man? How, how, did, how did you get the name Tony Cripple? All right, so. <laughs> all right, man. So let me go back a little bit to 2020, all right? We in COVID, you know what I'm saying? COVID is jumping off. Just hit us. Everybody in the house, Panicking. but Atlanta, I mean, but Florida is still open a little bit. A little bit, yeah. We got a little action, you know, so 
I'm talking to all my boys that had the high end, like, you know, rental car companies, you know what I'm saying? Where you can go get your Lambos and shit. Yeah. Then my homeboy, Todd Johnson from the Johnson Johnson family, they had jets that, that really wasn't moving. My other homeboy had Airbnb, so I got with all them since we were still open. He had, you know, niggas like, you know, Lil Baby and all them niggas that was still getting out and rappers that was coming here. I was like, you know what? I can put y'all on y'all Rolls Royces to sell y'all stuff. Yeah. I was getting it for the low. The car's just sitting on lots. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm getting you Rolls got, Royces. You got this direct connect. I'm getting Rolls Royces at what at dealer calls. You know, before they put the hundred, so you know, so we, we we moving like that. So while I'm at the crib, you know what I'm saying, my boy comes in from Chicago and he starts telling me about these NFTs. Mm -hmm. My homeboy Mick from Proper Steps, right? Because he playing out here. Right. So I'm like, what is an NFT? Mm -hmm. So he breaks down what an NFT is, is digital art and all this little stuff. And they were just hooking up with ASAP Rocky, finna do his NFT stuff. So I'm like, okay, but those weird little pictures, right? And then one of their business partners, he was the head dude, he, they put together this people deal. And it was the NFT that sold for $69 million in 24 hours. <laughs> So I said, "What? What? Sixty-nine million dollars? What? What yeah, did you? Hours. What did you just sell?" Little Jewish dude. He was on. Uh, uh, he was on uh, in Forbes thirty for thirty. Okay. In okay. twenty twenty, okay. right for what he was doing, right? So I said, "Look." I said, "What if?" I said, "I, I looked at the art." I said, "Man, this it, it looked crazy." Right. I said, I said, "They buying this for millions of dollars?" He said, "Yeah, man, it's collectible." I said, "What, what, 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 what if I can get you all correct?" Can you digitize that? Do say you can get a Grammy or a platinum box. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of homies with Grammys, platinum blocks. He said, man, if we mint those and put Grammys on the blockchain, signed off by the artist, they go for me. I said, okay. So I threw a yacht for him. So I had all the connections and everything. So I pulled out the Rolls Royce. That's what I was. That's one of the best places to have business. Hey, look, hey, look. And, 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 and it was kind of a gift and a curse, right? Because everybody think a nigga rich. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> you know, but during 2020, like if you go down my Instagram or go down my Facebook and get to 2020 that, during that COVID, yeah. I stayed in Rolls Royces. Yeah, yeah. I was in Rolls Royces, lamb trucks, because they were just sitting. Yeah. And my homies were like, here, man, get out, play with it. Let people know you got it. Mm -hmm. So they cut out here, they call me, okay, boom. So they kept me fly. So I threw a yacht party, right? I had the yacht. And so I got some influential people from the music industry. You know what I'm saying? I had Stevie Williams on DGK, the black pro skater from that. He signed to me, you know, I get into that. But I had him, I had DMX people, because DMX was still alive. He was working on a movie called Dog Man. Shout out so yeah, shout out X, man, rest in peace. Rest in peace. So I had all his people here because they, was, they, they just shot in Atlanta. A week and a half before he died, they was in Atlanta shooting the Dog Man movie. They came here, shout out to Antonio Simmons, the uh, DMX cousin, right? I had them here because they was gonna shoot their last scenes here and I was supplying the Airbnbs, the crib, the, 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 the car, the car. I had the car. Uh, yeah. I'm, if you go around my timeline, you see him on Facebook and all, it's, you know. Y'all go to the timeline. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, hey, yeah, go, yeah, go, yeah, you go to Facebook and just go to Tony Crypto. You'll see me, Tony Crypto, fly nigga on there, leaning out of a Rolls Royce. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, you go down that timeline, you gonna see me promoting come be an extra in the DMX movie. You know what I'm saying? We promoting that. Then when he died, it just it just hit. I ended up going to New York. I had some bills now. We was all in New York in the middle of Times Square. But anyway, so I had them all on the yacht. And, and, and matter of fact, DMX cousin, Antonio Simmons, he filmed me yeah. with a live. That live like went viral on Facebook. Right. Me on the yacht explaining to all these, I had a, bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a billion dollars worth of niggas on the yacht. <laughs> and, and, and I'm gonna see the now, video. Now, 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 if you got 12, 15 people on the yacht, and that's a billion dollars. Oh, oh, yeah. That's a bag. Oh, yeah. We had, we had, tw I had like 20, I had people, I had everybody big, big bag. on this yacht to where, to where in the industry I was known to, as the one who introduced the game to the NFTs. Because I'm a nigga that introduced the niggas who go back to the niggas running the game, like, hey, you need to be up on this shit. Right. They didn't know what the fuck this right. shit. 2020, wasn't nobody up and, on this shit. And that's a gold mine. Information is. Right. Is a, Man, so listen. so I watched everybody run out off the yacht party, right? I watched everybody go out, try to do their own shit, do that. And our lawyers, because my business, so my business partner, right, he seen me on the yacht. It's a black dude. He's like our Bill Gates. He's a hidden figure. His name is Jason A. Swanston. Now, Swanston, 
He went to college at 13 and 93 for the first STEM program at Columbia NYU. Right, he was he interned at the company in the 90s that streamed the first movie with no latency across the internet. He was one of the first pioneers of selling music in chat rooms for the music business, has 80 platinum artists under his belt. But he created a streaming service, he wrote the codes for the, where you can watch a movie and click on what's in the movie and buy it, right? And then he was the first black to go on Fox Business, the tech edition, for his streaming service that, you know, boom, right? So. He was way out of my league though, you know what I'm saying? But he seen me at this yacht party. He was like, damn, what Tony talking about some tech shit? Cause he yeah, know me from yeah, the streets. I mean, yeah, I got wrong yeah, voices. Yeah. Now I'm on a yacht with all these motherfuckers talking about NFTs and digital shit. Like, what is this? So he hit me up, right? So the homie hit me up and was like, what you doing? I said, look man, you know, I got the white boy with me who did the $69 million deal. He got these other dude with him that run these hedge funds. He said, what you know about hedge funds? I said, I don't know much about hedge funds, but the nigga that's with him, he runs a $59 billion hedge fund mm. out of New York. Mm. I got the real niggas down here. We going up. He said, man, hold on. So at the same time, these dudes, they have more knowledge of me about the space. Because mm -hmm. I taught it to a bunch of niggas who knew nothing with some information I got from them. Exactly. Right? So their mind was so blown. Fluent. So look, their mind was blown. You know what I'm saying? These are, these are rich dudes from, from, the, from the financial world. Right. They don't hang with rappers in clubs yeah. and all that shit, yeah. they buy the shit. Yeah. They watch it, they stream it. Right. You know what I'm saying? They say nigga when it's only them around. They rap all the lyrics. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So anyway, they was amazed that I put all these people on this yacht. They like, damn, we on here with all these people. So they was like, look, Tom, we'll give you five, 10 percent of every NFT they sell. So I'm thinking, damn, they selling shit for me. I thought I'd get that. I'll get these niggas these deals. It'll be popping, right? right? But what they was doing, and I didn't know the process, so I hooked him up with Stevie, Grandmaster Flash, the first one I hooked him up with, right? I hooked him up with Grandmaster Flash, and, and within these two weeks, they talking to Flash, and they really, I ain't had no conversation. I'm like, yo, what's going on? They going on my head, they taking time with my contract. So I introduced them to my homeboy who do the streaming platform, right. you with me? Because they, the, these dudes, they had a show that was finna come on Bloomberg TV. And my partner Jason Swanson, That's he has a, he has a group on Facebook called the Black Investors Stock Group. He has about fifty thousand black people that follow him for everything 3.0, metaverse, NFTs, financials, and he he's got a couple of books out in this space. But at that time, he had about twenty thousand black people following him, right? And Latino. And um, when they was doing a thing on Fox, I mean on Bloomberg TV, they wanted somebody black that can come on there who knew the space that can talk that business. To, to a different demographic right, right, to right. push their shit. So, so I called I called him, I said, hey man, my boy wanna meet you. Bop, 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 bop. I said, look, I don't know nothing about that space, but I know you can make some money. I said, check it out. They're giving me a contract. I just wanna know, can you look at my contract? Cause you the smartest nigga I know. You heard me? Yeah. You a genius. So once he looked at my contract, he said, hey, Tom, when they trying to jerk you, they want you to bring our black culture to them. He said, oh no, he said, I know everything they know. He said, they want me to fly to New York. I said, they want you to fly to New York. They didn't tell me that. He said, they didn't. He said, look, get you, he said, I got you a plane ticket. We are leaving in the morning. We going to, and we stayed up all night that night and, and, and got, and, and found a name, NFT fans. said, we gonna go there, but I should incorporate it. We incorporated that, that night, night and that morning. When we got there, we was a business. So, they didn't even know I was coming. Thanks, I love that. that they, look, look, look. Well, and look, 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 we that, in, that's how a real boss move. Look, 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 we in New York. Move, and, and, and let me tell you, and, and it was two days. No, it, it was, it was the next day after DMX funeral. So that's when we hit New York. The next day after DMX funeral. So bam, these niggas live up in a high rise, right? So he said, "Tony, I'm gonna serve these niggas." So nigga, gotta imagine, dude flew me to New York, put me in a hotel, Times Square. I really just met the dude. I just knew him because we kicked it a couple times. I knew he was a genius and he was in the financial space. This nigga, like, I can't help him. Like, he, you got it. But since he seen me talking tech, he was like, yo, what is you doing? So anyway, now I'm in New York. These niggas that, that did the $69 million deal and, and run the hedge fund, he's going up to the top of their penthouse, right, to, to go meet with them. When he gets there, he's like, yo, what's up? They like Jason. They open the door. I'm standing right behind him. He's like, yeah, I bought my business partner, Tony. I'm like, yeah, what's up with my contract, Ooh, whatever. I said, we'll talk about that later. So we sit down and he ended up ripping these fools up and I filmed it. 
Yeah. Right? And then so the dude asked him, he said, they said, yeah, we're working on metaverses. He said, I've been building a metaverse. So I'm looking now like, and this nigga know what the metaverse is too? Yeah. Right? So he's like, yeah, so they question him and he eating they ass up. Like, man, what are you banged on him? Right? So we leave out of there. He goes, he he leave out of there. I go, hey, homie, what is the metaverse? Tell me about it. So we walked all around New York, got downtown New York, all by Central Park, Billionaires Row, and he telling me about the metaverse and how it works. The met I said, why don't you bring it out? He said, no, I'm not going to bring it out till later because it's going to go on my streaming platform where you get my streaming service. All, all the all, all the advertising channels that have virtual worlds, you can go into the metaverse. Right, right. So we started the NFT agency. So I went back to all my black celebrities and I said, look, we're doing our own thing. I got Chase introducing to Jason. And this was in 2021 now. Hurricane was the first artist I signed to my company called NFT Fans Agents. Then I ended up signing Angie Stone. I signed Slam for 112. Uh, slot because I knew, okay, if we're going to set NFTs, we got to sell some shit with intrinsic value that has value. Fuck a little, fuck a little digital picture nigga made on his computer. Right. Nigga really, want the micro, nigga want the digital asset of the microphone that Al Green sung on. Come on. I got the number nine mic digitized. I own that. This is the, what Al Green made his hit song. I know niggas, no, niggas might not care about a picture, but niggas going to want the outfit that the nigga wore when he sung, did not blow your mind on Soul Train. I want that outfit. I need the helmet that that uh, Amon Green wore when he broke the record in Lambeau Field as the leading rusher because I know all the people who are his fans, they'll buy that for Ethereum. I don't know if they'll buy a Will Pitcher, but they gonna buy this helmet or these shoes from the combine yeah. that, 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 uh, you know, you, know. you know your market and what's gonna go. Right, so then we pulled it all together. Then we pulled a, a big whammy on it, right? Cause we wanted, we was all, you know, it was, it was black. Uh -huh. we, we was doing it cause there was, there was no blacks in this space that they was allowing in on a different level. My homie just brought me up to a big financial level, right? So he had already been banging with, with, with the niggas in Silicon Valley and the hedge funds and the family office people. You know what a family office is, right? No, Let me tell you what a family, so you with me, a family office now. When you're an LLC, right, and you're a limited liability, when you're going to get some money, anything between zero to $100,000 to maybe 150, you can go get that, you go to your bank and you deal with the person at your bank. Hey, I got a company, you go show me articles of corporation, boom. Now, when you start moving up, into the into, into the S corps, and you want to go get anywhere between that quarter million to to uh, let's say three million. You need you three million dollars, right? Now you're dealing with a um, what they call business plan. Let me see what you plan on doing, right? And boom, and you're fired. So now you go with that. But now when you start getting up into the C corps, and you want to go get anywhere between ten million to $75 million. Now you're dealing with a deck. They don't want to see a plan, they want to see a deck. They want to see the numbers to reflect the deck, right? That's when you're dealing with that. Anytime you're going to get between 75 and a billion dollars, you're now, and, and when you're dealing with, when you're going, let me go back now, when you're at C Corp, you're going to basically a VC, a venture capitalist. They're gonna come in, they're gonna give you the money but they're gonna have control of your company and at any given time, they can kick you out because they're gonna make you a CEO. The CEO just means you got a great job. The CEO doesn't make you the owner. The chairman is the owner. That's why CEOs get fired, CEOs get hired. They don't own it, right? So boom, you're dealing with that. But now when you're going to get that, like I said, to that 75 million cap, now you're going dealing with BCs. You're dealing with the BCs, you're dealing with different type of entities you know what i'm saying these hedge funds that can get you that right but now when you're going above that now you need your deck and you need what they call a performer a performer just doesn't reflect the numbers that you need for the other funding if you can get that far the 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 numbers that 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 it reflects on how these numbers are going to perform now there's one thing for me to just show you some numbers you like, ah, oh, it matches up. Now let me show you how this, this is how it jumps off, yeah. right? So, so that's what that is. So with my partner going to that, we knew, okay, we wanted to be, 
we wanted to have digital assets. We knew how we wanted, so we did sign a white guy. And we signed Joel Freeman, right? Now, Joel Freeman, he has the Freeman Institute. He has more black artifacts than anybody in the world. 3,000 of them are in the Smithsonian Institute, right? And uh, I mean, I mean, when you go on our page, you'll see we got Harriet Tubman's underground uh, letters. We got Frederick Douglass's last letters. We got uh, we got boxing gloves. You know, I mean, I mean, you history oh, artifact man. kettlebells from the Amistad slave ship. And when we signed that, having all those digital assets and what we got, we got a 1.2 billion dollar valuation on our company and having digital assets. Yeah, right so we have four attorneys we have our trademark attorneys and then we have our patented attorneys right because that's what we deal with in our space yeah. it's like if somebody say if somebody takes a picture of us and i go to sell it as an nft later down if it's not with your phone if i don't say here take my phone and take a picture she owns the picture right so now she can come back and say hey i didn't give them the rights to use my i know it's them but i took the picture that's my picture now i won't X amount of so, that, that, that's so all that and, and, and then say I take a picture say he wants to NFT this right. now you can have the UGN come back you can have whatever logo that is say hey I didn't get him the rights to put that on there that's my logo on that NFT mm. oh and I had nothing but platinum plaques and jerseys everybody's logos I had Green Bay Packers, a ladder right, Falcons, right, and right, right, yeah. Wow. All, the, all the logos. Do it yourself. So let me tell you, right? See, nigga, when you selling dope and you selling work, right? When you when you think about what can shut this down, right. all right? You already built a deal with the ops. That's what you got a team for. Like the ops, they, 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 they might they might do some. They they finna shut us down though. Only thing that can shut down your movement is them feds. You can bang on them if you want. You get rich or die trying, nigga. They're going to keep on. Right. You know what I'm saying? More than likely, you're going to be doing them wake-ups and them hots and them, you know what I'm saying? Politicking like that. But anyway, the FED, the feds, is where to bring you down. But when you on this side, they got a thing called the SEC. And that's the Security Exchange Commission, SEC. They come at you like the feds. Because now you're dealing with bonds. Like, I, what, imagine if I'm not a licensed stockbroker, but I sell you some stocks and you lose money. Like, like who, where they do that at? You gotta be, I can't just go sell you a house. I gotta be a licensed realtor. But now you got all these dudes do stepping into the NFT game selling digital assets. So now you got people at, at these big financial companies like, what are these fools doing? They're soliciting unaccredited investors. So how do they get control of the NFT? No, let me tell you something, right? They just deem NFTs digital assets, right. right? So now, if you have a company selling NFTs, right? When you maybe, say just deem, when, when, how long ago? It's been about eight months ago. That, that's why they came after Snoop. If you look up Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg got hit hard. Right. Justin Bieber got hit hard. The Weeknd got hit hard. Because they got paid. It, it, it's like the homie come in here and say, hey, this cell phone is hot. Mm -hmm. But really, in this cell phone, it's nothing. It, it's a bunk cell phone. Right. It, like, it, it's a burnout. It's going to fizzle out on you. But I'm promoting it. Yeah. And he buy it, and he buy it, and he get it, and he get it. And they switch their plans over and cut off all their shit and they lose all their memory. They lose everything, all their pictures. Ain't no backup. They like, oh, who do we come at? Well, I don't know. Them niggas, but I know Tony Crypto. I don't know who's behind all this whoopy whoop NFTs, but I know Snoop Dogg, Justin Bieber, The Weeknd, Tom Brady, Giselle, they all got hit. They, uh, your boy Shaq was hiding out in his house for like a week in Atlanta trying to get served. They just served Shaq and shit. The SEC is hitting them, and our lawyers told us. He said, because they're selling this shit on instagram on that they're not investors they're going straight off the hype so it's like i'm gonna go take my hard-earned money give me a wallet who i gotta ask my homie at work how to do this on my phone put my credit card number in buy some ethereum with my money and buy this thing and come to find out 
You mean to tell me y'all bought it yourselves and raised the number up on it and got a celebrity and it was really a, called a rug pull and now my money's gone? So that's what I think that's the type shit. That it was the big it was it was the big rug pull. That's why all these people so we sat back. So we pay our attorneys a lot of money. So we're like, okay, well, how do you see your way around that? Since most of the people we deal with are unincredited investors. They have between $1 and 999000 Anything over that is an accredited investor. They, they're, they're a shark. You can go talk to them and boom. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You go tell your mama, hey, drive me down the street. Or the old lady, you got work. Homie, you get put on, she catch a case. She like, she didn't know. But then go ask the homie, hey, drive me around the corner to whoop de whoop. He got to be like, oh, heck no, homie. <laughs> I ain't with that. You better, or he gonna be like, how much you got? Homie, give me something. How much you got? He's a credited street dude. So y'all get caught up, he knew what it was. Right. The old lady down the street just trying to give you a cool little ride. She didn't know you had hair around in there. She thought it was just your, your backpack. She I finna catch. Close. So that's how it was with hustling these NFTs. They was using the hype off this celebrity to just trick the fans. Right, right. So our lawyer said, look, this is what you gotta do. You gotta sell in your own ecosystem because if somebody onboards your ecosystem, they sign up, they're in, they know exactly what they're getting. That's like if, the, why they come that, to this, that's like this. if the old lady come to the spot yeah. and be like, yeah, let me get a dime, little nigga. Right, you yeah. like, damn, Miss Betty, you smoking? Yeah. Yeah, well, Betty, shoot me over there. What you got? Now, Miss Betty's the crip. Miss Betty ain't just the old Miss Betty. She in the street. Like, Miss Betty, that's she, she with it. Because she came to the trap. She in our ecosystem. Mm -hmm. We didn't go knock on a nice lady door. Right. She came over here with us. You heard me? So now, he said, you bring out the metaverse. Now the metaverse, that right there will be your own ecosystem. Because if they come into your metaverse, they're part of it. Now you can sell them NFTs. You can sell them hats because they know exactly what they're getting. Mm -hmm. Right? People know. They buy this. They get this Jam Master J's hat. I own it digitally. It's on my meta human. Then I can do a one of one on it and sell the actual hat. After I rocked it on the stage or after I went to a couple of rolling louds or whatever and put the metaverse on the stage with, with Hurricane and we rock it, we put our hats up, uh, you can own the real hat. So I told him when we gonna build our own ecosystem, I went back to my partner, I said, look, remember the metaverse you was working on? He said, yeah, Tony. I said, we gotta drop it. This was, this was, this was uh, uh, going into 2022. I said, we gotta rock that metaverse. And so he had all his graphic designers and all that. And I was like, yeah, I said, we got to set it off. Everybody with us said, let's switch from pushing their NFTs on a thing to now let's push their metaverse buildings. So uh, we, the first building that we pushed on OpenSea was Raheem's condo. And he sold two condos in his building that he's building in the Bronx. And then Hurricane sold three condos. So they were the first hip, hip hop pioneers to sell to sell um, property in the metaverse on a, pri a real private auction. So that shit started spreading. So the, so our name started spreading. So then, since my partner was being uh, one of the marketers and pioneers with the first Grand Theft Auto, I'm like, look, we need some of that gamification too. So I started learning about gamification and coding and this and understood what it took yeah. for the hyper-realism. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, my partner is interna international. He lives in India and he lives here in America. So I was able to connect with him and a lot of digital designers and we put our stuff together. And, and you know, we got a launch date coming up at the end of the year, we launched in Times Square. And I said, we got to drop it. So as we started dropping it and they're working on like little demos saying, okay, this is what the cars look like. This is what I said, man, I said, man, send me the demo. They said, it's not done until I said, it's cool. So I'm gonna make some rap to go with it to put behind us so niggas can see what we coming with. Like, nigga, this shit look like for real. Like, in our Atlanta, you look like, it's Atlanta. We, we, we got, we got, we got, we got 12 hour daylight. So if it's daylight, or when you're looking at what time in the metaverse, it's gonna turn to night. Like we got a hundred year weather pattern that they program. It's gonna rain, you get wet. You gotta go and change your clothes. You got all, it's gamified. So what I'm telling you is, Craig, you'll be able to have a store in there. So our whole thing is with the mall. We we want to be we want to have our Earthia mall 
like the Amazon of the metaverse. You know how you go on Amazon, if you want to get one of these, you go on there and show you a hundred of them, you click on the pick. I want to have stores where people got their store for us and got this and we got the mall. We're working with Mall of America actually, because we're doing Mall of America in the mall. So now I got my homeboy Emmett, piece of Emmett out there in Minneapolis. He's in the malls working it. You're getting the stores to sign up. That way, when you go to the Mall of America in the metaverse, you can go in the stores. All through it. All Shout through it. You ha have your MediHuman try on the shoe. So, yeah. but, but, but it's a process because we have to have digital pictures of everything. We got to go in and film. So, this, well, is, this is what I was saying. Like, how do they get that, that, that type of thing? That's the answer. So, they got to go film all the Yeah, because like, see. Like Google Maps. Exactly. You got to get a And real we're able to drop it in the box. So, we got these cameras. We got, we got, we got, uh, this camera is called the Komodo. It's the new red. Like you just take. Like yeah. The, oh man, I can do 3D with it. it and do all that, and then they would take it and then we drop the footage to them. They drop into their softwares and they start working and gamifying it and, and doing all that, so you can go inside of it and move and pick up stuff. So we're doing that, and so we started working on the metaverse, and then I know a lot of the homies started coming and saying, "Hey, how can I build my metaverse? How can we do this?" So. I told my homie at the beginning of the year, I said, we need to be the go daddy for metaverses. You know what I'm saying? We, people need to be able to go and want their metaverse built. We have all the dope uh, designers. We can design it. Right. We have the we have the infrastructure for it, which is Earthy, our metaverse. You know what I'm saying? So we, we can build them and shit. So um, I just uh, kicked off, um, which it'll be up uh, Friday, uh, mymetalworld.store. Uh, we're working on the website. They're almost finished with the website. Uh, I'll show you some, some slides of the website. It's very extensive because of our terms of use and our services and our privacy policies. It has to be on point because I'm a startup tech company. I'm not an entertainment company, which I do entertainment, but I am a tech company. I take music and I take everything from videos and turn it into computer codes. So I'm a tech company. So what I said was like, okay, I got to create some music. So I had... Uh, Hurricane sent me this artist named Dub City, who was at the uh, Dub City 3.0, right? So I needed somebody to rap this metaverse shit. Mm. So he was cool. So we, I never had met him in person. We on the phone. I sent him the music, and I'd be like, okay, this is what a family office is. A family office, back to I was explaining. Once you, once you go into a building, you gotta go to a family office. Now, a family office is just say you're worth billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. You have trust and all that. So you know keep your money like your money's moving mm -hmm. so now you become your own financial institute right. whatever your last name is that's your family then you hire people to run your family trust mm -hmm. so now i need 700 million dollars you got billions i go to a family office that can just see my performance see that and have that type of money liquid to fund what i'm doing without because these financial institutions they can't do that it's hard to get up into the family offices mm -hmm. right but tech initiatives can right but anyway, so that's what a family office is. A family office is a family-owned billionaire family that runs these, this was called, it's like a bank, but it's a family office. And so that's what we want, family office. Right, that's why the name of my, uh, my album is Family Office. Yeah, I'm yeah. the black family office. <laughs> but we got that up man. in there and we're dropping a metaverse. So I said, look, I did a, a meta album with my little homie, which came out dope, did all the videos for his shit. Dub City 3.0, you can go to YouTube, put in NFT fans agency, and it'll pop up, and you can see his album and stuff and see all that stuff. But anyway, I was listening to it, and I said, okay, we just missing something. We missing, because they, they on that today move. I said, but if we're going to take over hip hop or something, we got to be able to crack these funk master flexes. We got to be able to crack the old niggas my age that are the gatekeepers for hip hop. Right. These are the niggas that still keeping Buster Bus and Split Star moving. Because they came from an era when niggas didn't eat. You got to cook the food. You, had to really you got to it. serve the food, yeah. but they get to eat it. Niggas is platinum and still hopping out the, you know, with all their homie shit. Right. We come from that era, but we didn't give a fuck though because it was either that or nothing. So yeah, I fuck it. I ain't get no money no way. You making a whole bunch of people know me? Do it, run it. Let's go. Everybody know my shit. Everybody know me. I'm gonna get money anyway. Niggas went on that, but niggas never thought about when I get older. You know what I'm saying? So what we did was we, we, we when we went in, um, I got a trillion shares in our company. We incorporated with Dun and Brad. We got a trillion shares, and the lady laughed. You know, we got a trillion shares. 
because, because our exit strategy was public. And I knew the shares, the shares of money. You know what I'm saying? If you grind. I remember I told you I got there a couple days after DMX's funeral. And if you go back, and if you go back at that same time, look at the same day of his funeral, you're gonna look at Jay-Z sales 300 million shares of his stock in a company where he had over a billion shares, mm. over 300 million. So he cashed out 300 million, I mean 300 million shares for about 300 million dollars and he still got about 600 million worth of shares. So you know what I'm saying? So boom, the whole same time, same two days. And we just incorporated Trillion. So I took my shares, my partner took his, and we want to exit public on the New York Stock Exchange. So I know I got to have enough shares for people to buy to go public to have that. So I got to have that on reserve. But I got to have enough shares to where no matter how many you buy, you cannot buy me out. Right. Boom. And then what I did, everybody who signed with me, I gave them about 20 million shares in the company. Mm -hmm. So that way we're really a black owned company. So Angie Stone, Amon Green, Dorsey Levins, <coughs> uh, I got the OJ signed to me. I got, I got, I'm doing the, the Laverde State, the Casanova. All these, put it like this: for all 40 of my celebrity clients, all have stock in my company. So how do you find, how do you find the uh, people into the company? How, what, the people that are in it? Yeah. All right, I got the website. It'll be a Friday. But all you gotta do is go, like I say, go to YouTube, type in NFT F A N S S NFT Fans Agency. Click on the channel, click on videos. I got over 100 some videos on there. All I'm at a verse, look at the timestamp. I've been doing this for years. You understand? So when you go down to Bob, look at the first, I got Slim for 112 signing me. Go look at this meta mansion. Atlanta, I've been having this for years. You know, that's why I look at people, I'll be like, oh, you are you working your shit? How long you been doing it? Slatic, like, man, hold on, man. I introduced the game of this shit. So I ain't gonna lie, man. You broke a whole lot of shit down for us, bro. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and, and you know, you even passed a couple of these questions. So, we know the metaverse is something that we're looking for. We right. know it's coming. You know, some people still getting on to it, you know what I'm saying? I remember people telling me about it, and I was like, man, I know it's coming, but I, I don't know. I want the right person to tell me about it. You know right. what I'm saying? But uh, is that something that you're going to be doing concerts in it? In, in, you know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Shows and how can I still, do? It, how can I do things in the middle? All right, like, it, can I do interviews? Right, and shit right. like that? It, it seems crazy, right? Because I'm putting together the Meta Show, right? And <laughs> Let's go Meta Show. All right, the Meta Show is crazy. The Meta Show, you know, is I got, I got, we got, we got our our, our, our digital team. Yeah. And shout out to Samori and all them. He does all the NFT big conventions, New York, all the big LED walls and stuff behind them. But we're gonna have an immersive stage. So when I'm, when I'm rapping, it's gonna be like, you're looking at the metaverse, there'll be big meta mansions on stage, it's gonna be crazy. But it's gonna be the opposite. It's, you know how people are like, oh, can you take us to the metaverse on your stage? You remember, uh, I don't know if you remember the Up and Smoke tour, Dr. Dre and them had a, had a, had a tour, right, him and Snoop. And before the concert started, it was like, it was like a damn in a, in, in a liquor store, they had a shootout and they come walking out on stage after they kill niggas in the liquor store, whatever it was, right? Or just like the opposite, when you at the, when you at the, the, the concert, right? Imagine it's all immersive. So you got you got hologram projectors on all edges of the stage, point to the middle. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? About thirty feet high. So it's, mm -hmm. all the images are big, like this room. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's in the metaverse, and you got my character, my meta human. You got my other homeboy. You got the blockchain boys and the homies. We on the meta block, chilling in the metal with. And I show you the I show you the, the spot. The spot is dope. It's game of five. Let's go. I'll show you the video. But you got us chilling, and, and that's what the crowd is watching. Boom, right? And he tells me, you hear it loud, a hey, tone, crypto, what's up? He's like, I got a, I got a portal pass. And I'd like to wear it. He'd be like, the earth. You got a show. You want to go rock it? And you're looking at these metahumans on the stage bigger than life. And then I'd be like, let's go. And then he hit the portal, and the portal opened up. The light hit up on stage. Like the portal, but it's a hologram, and we come up to the bottom, and I come walking out with the same outfit on that you just seen the meta human on, but now it looks like we just portal from the metaverse to the stage in real life. And now I'm Tony Crypto. Tony Crypto, let me tell you about Tony Crypto. Tony Crypto is a character in the gamified version of because you'll be able to have two versions. You'll be able to go on a social part of our metaverse where you can interact with people, yeah. then you'll be able to go on the gaming side. To where you can play it kind of like a Grand Theft Auto and start a label and all that. But Tony Crypto 
and the but blockchain actually boys stick to the game. Yeah, it's, it, like, it's a game. What you building? Actually, like tomorrow is gonna still be there. Right, exactly. And, like, it's a game. It's not like a reset thing. It's no, like you really, yeah, you're building. You really, he'll build it. Right. right. And so you got your many humans, yeah. and Tony Crypto is a character that I'm doing a voiceover for, kind of like a Grand Theft. It'd be gamified. So Tony Crypto's always in the gamification part of the metaverse. But in there, I run the blockchain boys, which is we got the record label already in there. We already got all the metal whips. If you come in here and buy a metal whip, you basically get it from one of Crypto's exotics. So you know what I'm saying? Like I got the I got that part locked down, but then you could build your own label. You can start a business in there, part of the game. You got current, you know, got crypto, you can buy this in the game and you might come and start a marketing agency. And in there niggas wanna you and you buy up the billboards. But now in the game niggas wanna come, they gotta come see you and pay you crypto and you put their shit up in the game. Cause you done got it about that, cause you have more crypt. So it's gonna be one of them real gays and then you're gonna be, but it's dope though. I don't wanna give up too much cause that's a lot of NDA talk I'm talking about, but it's so hard to do what I'm doing. Like, you know, most of the years you, it's, you can't, yeah, you know, know, certain things you can bite, some things you can't, you I'm just can't to swallow. This is that like crypto is possible, man. Right. Get off in that metaverse, I need me a meta mansion. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I went in the studio, man, and, and, I, and I just sat back and I was like, okay, how can I, cause in order to kick something off, you gotta drill it in their head. Like my brother's from Cypress Hill, Send Dog, the one side could just kill a man. But one thing they did to why they're still on tour today, when you think of them, even if you don't know the music, you know, I can just kill a man, rock superstar. Like they drilled that pattern, you into, know, yeah, into, your brain. into your brain, little John, yeah, okay. Like it's just over and over. They be they just drill these things to, to make them icons in in the in the game. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, you know, I gotta be able to talk this meta talk. Like, and I was thinking back because I come from the Jeezy movement in Atlanta, and and that whole my family, you know, over there at Hit Code and working with L.A. Reid them and, and just being part of that whole movement in Atlanta. I was like, okay, I had to think about when they broke that. He was with all the gangster rappers was out, the Gucci's, and he he had to be able to talk that snow and talk it and put it and 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 the it hit had a, it had a flow like and his ad libs his ad libs came from one of my homeboys my homeboy uh from from the four four soldiers from from the four it was C Dog from the four four soldiers out to Big Curtis uh him and Shorty Red had a group called Four Four Soldiers and they had a song called Walk Like a Soldier. And, and it was during the crunk movement. So I would go, walk like a soldier, talk like a soldier. Yeah. Hey, let's get it. Hey, no. Come on, a little history, history right there. No. Learn about history. But if you're here with the crunk no. movement, you know what I'm talking about, right? But anyway, Shorty Red, who is Shorty Red, know you know. Shorty Red. My little nigga, B Banger, shout out to them, DJ Dice, you know. But. For somebody like Shorty Red to come in, he had the the wherewithal to go, man, let's put this together because Jeezy artist Cross kept getting locked up. So Jeezy had to really, it was, you know, we had to make a move. Right. So I watched how they did it. So I said, damn, okay, I got to be able to talk this NFT shit, but I got to be able to catch the attention and niggas understand it that have no idea what I'm talking about. And but keep, I got to keep, keep it fly, in. though, yeah, that yeah. they want to listen and learn more. Right, right. That, and, that'll and keep that's me it. locked in. And, 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 and that's keep it fly for me. Keep it real jiggy. I'm gonna, right. Gonna, and it's okay. got to be on that vibe because it can't be corny. So Because it can't, because, and this is, where we, this is where we lose out a lot of times. We see something ahead of the curve before it comes. And because of who's presenting it to us, we'll lose out and be like, well, right. I don't want to hear it from you. Right, right, but right. But you know what I'm going to tell you something. Those exceptional individuals that are in the peak game and see for what it is, not for what the cover value is, they, they say, let me chop this up with you, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. 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 Let me get this information. And it's the next now, level. Now you empowering yourself, man. Right. Because it is the next level. Right. Like what I said at the show, man. Right. It's all oh, you said. Hey, you you this, said the real. You know. Where y'all gonna be? Y'all gonna be tuning into this shit, man. And, uh, sooner than later, man. Uh, uh, if you get later on it, that shit, you should have stayed on it. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm trying to tell you. This see, is coming, and you can't avoid it. Right. You know, see, you I'm might take, as well get ima part and see, now. imagine this, homie. Right. Imagine it's 1996, and I'm trying to tell you about dot coms. And I'm like, man, you need to get some websites. You're like, www dot, man, you ain't even got a computer at your crib. 
You like what I want to get a, a website for? And I'm trying to tell you I about MP3s. Right. So yeah. that's what it's like right now. Right, but by the time 24 Yo, next my year, my let me tell you, next year everything gonna be immersive. Yeah. And these new these new Apple glasses. Yeah. Oh, and they fly. Oh man, everything. Oh, all they gotta do is make them fly. Yo, that's it. You know and, and, and they, they, ugly the light, so Oculus is finna be like the brick phone. So oh. everybody with these Oculus right now, that's like walking around with a brick phone. Back in the day, if you had one, they was fly, but now we on they on iPhones and the glasses is coming. Everything finna be immersive. It ain't finna be no more. What's your IG? Bro, it's finna be what's like your meta grand. address. I seen some shit like but, that. But but everything go up. Them then it come down. Hard. Yeah, it's finna yeah, yeah. come down. They gotta drive the price up. At first, oh, they gotta oh, make that oh, money oh, back oh, and make yeah. them exclusive. But look, see, let me tell you, bro. It ain't no more. It ain't finna be no more. What's your IG? Right. It's finna be what's your meta address. I pull up. You pull up. Yeah, what's the meta address? Uh, Remember Tony Crypto out. told you everybody will have a meta address on Real Spit TV. Oh, Real hey, Spit. Hey, hey man, listen, dog. I've I, I, I heard about this motherfucking Tony Crypto shit, man, because I heard this song, man. I went to a couple shows, heard this motherfucker. It's hey, Tony Crypto. Like the whole yeah. crowd chanting that shit, dog. Um, I was blessed to be at what you say your first performance was. Right. Which is crazy how everybody know the music already. Right, right, right. And, and it's like, you for, okay, so, you've been, uh, you've been around a lot of stables lately, man. Yeah, you know. So, and back man. to back, we getting back to Miami, man. We gonna get on this, this, this metaverse because this is the leader of that shit right here. And uh, I wanna sit down and break it down with you on that shit because I wanna, I wanna teach the people about that shit. I wanna right. also get taught and, uh, I want to, you know what I'm saying, personally some other property. Oh, yeah, that's you know it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's your you, social wealth. You, you, you listen to it in the music. He's a, you know what I'm saying? That's my metal man. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Park down side and I'm middle fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, I'm right. Like, yeah, so, bro, got this shit right. going on. If it's in the real world, I know yeah, it's yeah, it, 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 it. Let me tell you. Well, because, what we, what we, because, we because, that, real, because that's what's going to be the new, I mean, you got to think, it's going to be a new type of floss. You got you got might have somebody that work at McDonald's that do this, but he got enough money to get him a little Gucci belt or a Hermes, and he on he on his IG though with his Hermes and his Gucci on, but he live he you know he, he he living day to day. So imagine you got the same dude that can work at McDonald's, save up his check, right. and, and get a Meta apartment right. with a Meta um. Uh. So now instead of you go to IG, pull up to my Meta address. When you pull up on him, his shit out there clean, and he can talk with you and be in it with you. Tell you to hop in, you at your crib, he at his crib, but y'all together like this in his medical. Whole, you at the, the house whole, on the, the couch, like. Hey, so the metaverse already mapped out and shit. We oh, just, it we is. Just get a piece of, we just get a piece of it, because I heard Snoop and all them getting see, properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, Snoop like and them, though, shout out to his son, all them, <coughs> them the homies. You know what I'm saying? But they stuff is Roblox. It's like 8 bit. It's like playing, you know, Mario Yo, Brothers shit, or something. Shit. Our stuff is hyper, it, 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 a texture. It feel like if you had the studio in there, it's going to feel like this. It's going to live this right here. You're going to be able to virtually oh, pick that, it up. Oh, it's, going, okay. it's hyper realistic. I seen it. I seen it on, on, so, on, on the little So that, that, that's what we killing everybody. And if you go back to our dates yeah. on there, yeah. you see back it was in 2021, I 2000, had, early I 22. Seen, I, I was showing them hyper realism. The, 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 uh, the, uh, the difference between it because... I, what I'm used to is seeing the, the old cartoony looking like It's all cartoony. It's like looking stuff. And it's like everything you and see it, and it and it looked cool at, at some point because it's you know it, it look it look it look futuristic. Right. But what you got is like the real and world it's the real in that that verse. Right. And I was the first one showing it to him because okay. I knew who was watching me. Right. So I told my partner get with all your people right now. Call your people in Ukraine. Call your people in British Columbia. We email know. them. Because they all on his LinkedIn. He's like, I'm doing a big metaverse project. I need all y'all. Right. And plus, he a right. part of all them communities because right. who he right. is, right. my right. business partner. So he, he they tapped, tapped in. in. They're like, oh, we got this. Oh, we got your yachts. We do the yachts. We do this. Boom. Our, our whole crew, like, if you be going through IG, seeing all that from our metaverse development niggas, we all partnered with them. How, anything hyper-realistic, homie. We've, we, been there. we've already got it because I seen yeah. it coming. And they like, oh, we get to party with y'all. Y'all got the rapper. Like, 
We we like we Americans. Come on, we want to be a part of this. You like, know what? what? I'm the start of this, I like, want to be a part of this. Yeah. Come on, man. So we seen that. Yeah. So while these niggas is doing, it's, it's like while everybody taking they work and running to the corner, we said, hold on, man. Hey, 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 man. How much it cost for us to get your kitchen? And hit the back door. Boom. You work the front door. Like fuck the corner. The niggas on the corner are on blast. The police is driving right past the spot to go rush the niggas at the corner. Mm -hmm. They didn't find out where the spot was until the niggas who couldn't take the heat on the corner told them. I got it from right there. That's where I got The niggas who had the spot, that's how you run. Like, man, fuck, let's not run to the corner sling all our NFTs on on, the, on all these different platforms so that so the SEC can come hit us. Let's go up here and create our own virtual world, homie. Let's create our own spot, our own trap. And then bite people, what? So that's how I can explain it. Cause sometimes if I explain it to like a street though, you people, a lot of people might watch me go, aha, or understand. I get it now. We had to create us a trap. Snoop Dogg and all them just took their NFTs and ran to the block. It was serving everybody. Not even know who they serving. Serving them the covers. No going to jail. Meanwhile, we down here on the porch, homie. Homie working the back door, the gate. We know who coming down the alley. We watching it. So that's what the Earthia Metaverse is. That's our big trap where all the homies can come in By and boom, set up their stuff. We come in because, you know, you might want to have your podcast streaming on Earthia Cable because that's my, my partner's streaming service. Yeah. Our Metaverse, you'll be able to watch shows and programs that you can only see when you're in the Metaverse on your Meta Mansion. Right, right. But if you got the app, you got to be a but part if you have the community. app, once you once you become part of the community, you, you will automatically get the app to where you can watch Metaverse TV and listen to Metaverse Radio on your phone. Uh, and these are shows that you can't get on Apple TV. You can't get them on Spotify. You can't get, you, you can't go. Not, you got to be, be part of this. Yeah. Like what you want? I'm watching the show. It's always put in the Metaverse. Yeah. I'm listening now, to this now, radio. Now your partner like, well, for real, for real, what that? Yeah. Fine. Get oh, that. so you might have a record release party and have it in the metaverse. Oh, we're gonna do that, right? Invite the people out. It's like Biggie we just had the that. concert. They made a million dollars like so quick with the Biggie concert. Biggie was a meta human, and but Puff and all them, well, they messed up in my opinion. They all should have been meta humans, but they had Puff, the Locks, everybody. They all performed with Biggie in the metaverse about a month ago. So, and so. it was so. I mean, you know, they sold a whole what, lot. Did of everybody tickets. look different and shit? So, so no, so. It, it was Jada. Them, it was Jada kissing all them for real. So let but, me ask you: We in the metaverse, right? We gonna look real. We gonna look real, but somebody else coming in. With no, you can't do that. No, we you can't, can't. We can't. Can't mix. No, no, I'm not interoperable like that. No. Okay. Once you, no, once you in ours, you, you gotta can't get. Go, you gotta get. It you gotta be part of our ecosystem. You can't bring it don't matter. No, no, looking no, no. ass over but, here. But but see what they because because and I'm gonna tell you why right that it becomes an issue of of intellectual property right because just say if she wrote her codes and she, and and this this you know she has her own company and it looks a certain way and this is her intellectual property she owns patents to this this is what separates her now i have how i do my own way but now when i want to come and be in opera with her she's going to have to release her source codes to me, so I can program to match to even move in her world. Now, why is she gonna teach me her source code when her stuff could be tighter than mine? Mm -hmm. So we don't do that when it's tech business. You, you'll never see Apple over here like with this other company sold, doing a merger. Yeah. Nah, nah, not in the tech space. You might see me. You might be able to go to KFC and get some Taco Bell and try to. They'll merge together, yeah. but you'll never see these tech companies come together. Right. It's intellectual property. It's too much money in that. It's cold. You understand? So that's that. That's that rich. That's that rich. Right. Motherfuckers get and see too much information. Right. They can see all that that matrix looking shit and be like, "Ooh, I'm you know, right." Like, you know what I'm saying? But it, it, it takes a, 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 an exceptional individual right. to tap into something like that. Like, hold on, I see the, I see the real, I see the. Curve. See it. You know, we got our own down right here. This is gonna be a whole monument. Right. The future. The future. I mean, mm -hmm. really, especially when we start dropping our, our our clients and our partners' coins. And we talk about the future. Who it little be on the future is now. It, it's it's right here, right now. It's right here, right now. You know, y'all just gonna if you, if you ain't caught up to it, you gonna catch this interview. Yeah, the future is right now. Like, Damn, they was talking about it. It's right now. He's yeah, telling you understand. right now. This is Tony Crypto. though. This is his name. You know what I'm saying? This ain't no hey, game. Hey, look, is, let me tell you something, kids. Kids nowadays, 
can get on the phone, turn it on, hit the passcode, know how to click the microphone, tell the video what they want, pull it up, watch it, know how to pause it when you ask for your phone back, give you an excuse why you can't get your phone back, hit play and go back to watching the phone before they can spell their name. The future is right now. Right now. All right. So you heard me. So let me ask you this. So we talking about the future and right now. Where do you see yourself in the next year or two? The next year or two, um, I really see myself, you know, as one of the black pioneers in, in this future. You know what I'm saying? Going into this meta space and this, and this whole... Are we um, still going to have Forbes and not to cut you off? Are we still going to have Forbes in the meta space? Metaworld. You're gonna have all that. Okay, so yeah, we're, gonna, probably, we're, gonna, we're gonna have we're all that. For you in the, in, in the yeah, but, but, but what I what I really look at is, in is um, because right now in life, right? Because you know I, I come up in hip hop, man. You know what I'm saying? Music in in the streets, you know. But music has always been my thing. I was the last artist signed to Easy E right before he died. You know, and that's a whole other story. But um, but it's been my life, and it's like I mean, game. It, it, you know how they say the game of life. You know, it's the game of life. In the game of life, and me being 53 years old, I'm in game seven. I forced life for game seven, nigga. Like, okay, I got, I got to a car. Hey, hey, look, hey, look. I cost, hey, look, hey, look. 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 My belief in God and God's hand on me got me to the playoffs. Amen. Okay. It got me to the playoffs. Okay. So I didn't have a good season. Yeah. My season, I made some messed up decisions that landed me in jail and all this stuff for the young God, ladies, right? Good, you got here. Right? So, boom. So, when it looked like life was finna beat me, when they wanted to give me all day and give me that, ah, this wasn't right. And, oh, that was, oh, that was illegal. So, oh, God, let me hit a three at the buzzer. Like, why would you thought life was finna beat him? Oh, he forced, okay, he won a game. God, He's great. back. Then I got shot. Looks like life was finna beat me again. Ah, he won that. Life got me here, but I came back. I forced a game six. I mean, a game seven on life. Mm -hmm. At 50 years old, it looked like game motherfucking, they finna win it. Looked like they was finna win it because it was COVID. Man, you could hustle on the streets no more. The music was like, man, I'm at 50. What I'm gonna do? I can't rap. I can't get out of here. I'm too old to go get my life. Dang, man. This life just won on my court. Mm -hmm. They celebrating on my court. But guess what? COVID hit. Oh, watch out. There's a foul. NFTs. Hold on. He got my what he got. Oh, and they get the ball back. The oh, oh, meta rap. He hit a three. Oh, we going to game seven. <laughs> He's back at Tony Crypto game seven live right now in Miami. And, and I'm going to win. Because, you know what I mean? I'm going to go out of my late 50s, like you said. Bomb. What do I see? I see myself as already doing these tours, bringing them to the Meta Show, rocking the crown from Hollis Queens with the nigga who created it, who DJ for the Beastie Boys behind me yeah. spinning, DJ doing right. hip hop. Bringing a new educational space to young people who reflect my color and all other ethnicities around the globe on how it's cool and it's gangster to be smart and to be a leader. The gangster is the new smart. Rock codes, create codes, change your environment. I want to create that. Then, when you listen to my music, I ain't cussing on there. I said I'm. I said I'm too old to freaking talk about spinning the spin the block. Yeah, <laughs> spun the block. Hey, you know how many blocks I've been on? I got spun the block the, now, man. I'm gonna own the block. Man. I would never spin a block for some make believe anything. Like you know, all my homies out there banging into my ribs, my rules. Y'all already know. Them. I'll get down on that. <laughs> I let y'all know, man. It's make believe, man. It's all make believe. Somebody made it up and you believe in it. But what happens is uh, so many of y'all who believed in it lost homies to it. Now you got an actual real death attached to something that's make believe. Now that make believe thing comes real in your heart and you can't let it go. You can't let it go. That's like a man you said, we kings today. And we putting on some crowns. And we walking around with, 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 with fake plastic swords. They gonna blame me them two niggas on that flocker. But then we go get five or six more niggas. And these niggas got crowns, and they jesters. And they like, oh, them niggas done lost their mind. 
But then we come in and we're so, and, 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 no, 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 we about 40 deep. Everybody out here, like we in the kingdom, the people in the neighborhood, like what they doing? And somebody say something, because I say off with her head. And you go chop her head. I think, oh, these niggas ain't playing. They really think they kings and queens and got, what's going on? It's make believe I'm not really a king. This is not really my kingdom. I'm really just cut off somebody's head because they said something against my make believe thing. I'm not King Tony. I am Tony. Right? So it's make believe. Then my homeboy said, oh man, I'm big OG. OG, hold on. No, you not. Your OG don't stand for original. I'm here to wake you up. Let me tell you, what makes you an OG, right? If you're an OG from somewhere, just say you got the Jays hat, whoop de whoops. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna discriminate, say it's a cripple or blood. Just say it's the whoop de whoops. And today, me and you say, we Jays hat whoop de whoops. You know, we sitting here, we done had to drink, we done interviewed, we done did all this. We got a couple of homies in here, we just had whoop de woo this documented on film. We put it on. We the oh, we the originals. We can tell you what happened today. Mm -hmm. Right? But then three days later or the weekend, some homies here, man, I heard y'all niggas have started the whoop de woos. Yeah, he wanna get put on, we put him on. He ain't original. Right. His OG stand for old. You just an old gangster. But you ain't original, so I told my homies, so quit original. striving for so something original. you will never be in life. My OG stand for only God, one God. Be that OG where there's only one God. Don't strive for something unless you was original. And most of the originals, they are dead, they not doing it no more, they in prison or they burnt out on dope. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? So don't strive to do that. So I wanna teach my kids like, you know, be on something real. You know, don't die or give your life to something that's make-believe. Right. Like a gang or something like that. Because when you create these alter egos for yourself and your nicknames, when something happens to you, the alter ego jumps out of you. And whoever you are that was birthed here on this earth dies. Exactly. And, you know, and, and, and that's just real, man. So I just want to be an influencer, man, a leader, man, to my people. You know, and educate them on the future and be like known for somebody who brought in a change and brought in a future and made hard music with no cussing. And you can play it for my grandma and grandma be like, oh, that's the meta boy. That's the meta boy. Play it. And right. grandma can sing it. Yeah, right. Except the one part I say, if you don't know, now you know, nigga. And that's just classic. Hey, you know what? No lie, man. I showed somebody a video of that uh, that chicken and back wheel that he did. Uh, yeah. The microphone. Yeah. And uh, it was like, man, he looked like he looked like you know what I'm saying. That he brought me that Run DLC thing, man. I like that hat. And I was like, man, you, you right. really didn't know dog, how real. Like I said, that's how real those hats are. Right. I right. said, man, shit, you could see those motherfuckers across. But the these are hip hop. Floor. That's hip hop. I mean, you, you understand, like I told him where it came from and who he was. He well, was see, like, oh. well, see, before I get back to the story, with the hat, Run DMC, they were the first at everything. They were the first artists to have a full length cassette. Everybody else had a single. They were the first artists to go gold. The first rap artist to go platinum. They were the first rap artists to go on a major tour. The first ones to sell out Madison Square Garden. The first rappers to have a shoe deal. The first rappers to have a movie, Crush Groove. The first rappers to have a platinum movie soundtrack, Crush Groove the soundtrack. They was the first at everything. Every rapper that, cause they were gangster rap. Yeah. If you was in LA in the 80s, niggas was hanging out the window, gang banging, bumping 30 days, wake up, boom, boom. Like what's happening, homie? Bump and run DMC. So to be able to be like, homie, I know what y'all mean to our culture of music. Them niggas with the dickies, 40 ounces, brims on, gold chains, that was gangster. They were gangster rap. Yeah. Run DMC. Yeah, that wasn't no square shit. They was gangster <laughs> rap. Yeah. Curtis Blow, 8 million stories, that was gangster oh, yeah. rap. Yeah, you hear me? Then Ice-T came in and said, no, let me tell you some gangster stuff about the West. Six in the morning, pony sat by dough. And then it was on. Then it was a birth for niggas going, hey, and then we can rap about what we do. But run DMC. So these brims meant a lot, especially somebody my age. 
you know, the bill say, I got a run DMC, bro. It's like, nigga, fuck your J's, nigga. I got, I got a J for your ass. I got some, a real J. I got a J for your ass and some Adidas or something, you know?